All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Alliance for Community Trees webcast. The AC Trees webcast series is a monthly webcast held at the lunch hour. These trainings leverage local successes by amplifying to a larger audience to model organizations' methods, materials, and approaches. Our sessions are planned to last no more than one hour, with two presenters speaking on the same topic from slightly different perspectives, each for 10 to 15 minutes, followed by 10 to 15 minutes of questions and answers. Today's session is approved by the ISA, the International Society of Arboriculture, for one CE unit, unit and is also approved by the Society of American Foresters, that's SAF, for one CFE category one. If you haven't already indicated your certification number when you registered, you can email us after the session to make sure that you get your credits for attending. Also, most state landscape architecture boards require only a certificate of completion, which Alliance for Community Trees can provide to anyone who requests one. So again, just shoot us an email after the session. This is a program of Alliance for Community Trees. We're a national network of local urban and community forestry organizations in cities and towns all across the country. If you are not already a member of AC Trees, please consider joining. Today's session is Volunteer Pruning Program Essentials. Municipalities often set parameters for who can maintain public trees, and in some cases, partner with nonprofits to encourage safe pruning practices. With proper training and oversight, volunteer-led pruning can help public and nonprofit tree professionals manage growth and health of the urban forest. Pruning clubs also foster camaraderie among neighborhood green thumbs and encourage residents to take ownership of local tree health. And we are lucky today to have two excellent professionals who are helping to lead the volunteer pruning efforts uh, in their cities through their organizations, Sam Bishop of Trees New York and Linda Aramita of Tree People. And uh, first up today, we're going to have Sam coming from the big sit, Big Apple. Sarah, if you could uh, advance the slides onto um, the uh, opening slide and then Sam's presentation, that would be wonderful. And in the meantime, I will tell you a little bit about Sam Bishop. Samuel A. Bishop II has been the Education Director at Trees New York since 2005. During this time, he has developed and introduced new technologies to the education programs and increased annual participation in their Citizen Pruner course by over 100% in four years. He also teaches urban forestry at the New School, as well as courses on urban trees at the New York Botanical Garden. Sam is an ISA certified municipal specialist. Uh, sorry, and uh, he has received, in addition to being a, a great arborist, he received a law degree from the New England School of Law and a BA from Drew University. So a learned man in many fields, and we're glad to have you with us today. So thanks for joining, and uh, take it away. So. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Trees New York is a 501c3 nonprofit. And we originally started in 1976 in response to city budget cuts that drastically reduced the amount of money that could be spent for tree care. We, are, we work with volunteers from all five boroughs to help, keep, to help plant, prune, and protect New York City's urban forest. So these are, these are some of our uh, vintage shots from the, the archive. And of course, the beepers sign in the background on this one kind of gives it away. In the, in the time since Trees New York has been founded, we have trained over 11,000 New Yorkers as what we call citizen pruners, which are people who are, are trained by Trees New York and then jointly licensed by Trees New York and the New York City Parks Department to prune and help care for New York City street trees. It is illegal to prune a New York City street tree if you are not either a contractor with the Parks Department and have a pruning permit, or unless you're a citizen pruner. The citizen pruner pr course itself is a 12-hour course that is divided into five sessions. The first session the first session is a two-hour classroom session 
we go over tree biology and tree care. The second session is tree identification. The third session is tree care and pruning, again, so re-emphasizing the care. And also in the third session, we talk about things to what to do for trees that are beyond the realm of what we think citizen pruners can can handle in terms of their pruning. The fourth session is the outing, where we will actually go out in the field with the citizen pruners and do all the things that we talked about in the class. So, oops. So, for example, in this picture, you can see a class that's actually working, reviewing tree ID out in the field as part of their citizen, as part of the class. And then, of course, when we're out in the when we're out in the field session, primarily what we're focused on is tree pruning. And in this case, well, getting a shoe out of a tree too. I'm not sure if that quite counts as pruning, but certainly something that we have to deal with in the city. The fifth session is a review and the citizen pruner exam. The field outing is four hours, which we found is a good length of time for people to. Uh, to really get a feel for what their what pruning will be like and in terms of learning the, the techniques hands-on. And of course, because there are potentially serious issues if trees aren't well pruned, it's a chance for the instructors to identify anybody who maybe needs a little bit of uh, extra attention in terms of their pruning technique. For our outings, we prune trees all over the city uh, we've worked in basically every borough in uh, New York City, and this is an outing that we did in uh, last fall in Brooklyn. Our goal in the outings is to find locations that where people have um, where people have trees in a lot of different conditions, so a lot of different pruning conditions, a lot of different street and site conditions. And of course, we also work with AC trees. A lot of our outings are done uh, in the fall. Typically, we'll do two classes a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. And this is, uh, of course, our little advertisement for AC Trees Neighbor Woods Month when we were doing the outing in October. And I couldn't resist putting this slide in because that's also Riyadh, formerly of the AC Trees Board, and Suzanne on the, on the left and Suzanne on the right, uh, both of whom were my students and our citizen pruners. When de in developing the, the curriculum for the course and also in figuring out what citizen pruners can and shouldn't prune, and I know sometimes that's a, that's a concern for cities, we obviously had to work very closely with the Parks Department in terms of talking about the things that they were comfortable having citizen pruners prune and as well as what they felt needed attention. The focus for the citizen pruner program is on smaller newly planted trees, which especially with the Million Trees program, as we know, there's a lot of them out there, but to do a lot of individual hands-on care tree by tree can be very expensive for the city. So it was a perfect place for volunteers to come in and, and fill the gap. So in this slide with the, with the citizen pruner training, you can see we're focusing on low branches on a, on a pin oak and the street is actually narrower than it looks, so that typically that's a real problem with trees blocking the street. So that's one of the things we focus on is low branches. We also focus on uh, starting with the two Ds, dead and disease, dead and damaged, excuse me. Uh, branches on a tree, as I said, low branches, crossing branches, root suckers, Water, water sprouts, or as we more often call them now, epicormic sprouts, and sort of any other odd tree problems or, or pruning defects that we might find along the way. The tools that will typically allow citizen pruners to, to work with are hand pruners, hand saw, pole pruner and a pole saw. 
and of course loppers. The rules for which tools the citizen pruners can use were developed in conjunction with the Parks Department and considering safety. So citizen pruners are not allowed to use power tools and they're not allowed to climb in to climb anything to prune. They have to keep both their feet on the ground. Or as I tell my class, you know, even no human pyramids of citizen pruners and then saying it's citizen pruner rich all the way down to the ground so it still counts. Nuh -uh. They also don't climb the trees, so this is purely things that can be pruned from the ground and the focus of again of course is on younger trees that may need more inten a more intensive level of care and especially in very urban environments like this getting clearance on streets and both on the street side for vehicles and on the sidewalk side for pedestrians. Working with citizen pruners, of course, safety is also a prime concern. Now, citizen pruning is not the only thing that our students learn. We also do a lot of teaching on other tree care issues as part of the course, including, as you can see here, Asian longhorn beetle, which I hope most of you don't have to deal with. And in that way, we can also leverage the advantage of our citizen pruners to also be a, a large pool of well-educated eyes out in the public to help target other pests, problems, things like that. And of course, because they've already had tree identification, they can eliminate some of the false positives that might otherwise waste resources when you're dealing with something that's a, that has a limited host range like Asian longhorn beetle. We also do the citizen, or we should say we import the citizen pruner class into other things like green jobs training programs. This is me in the, the hat with the blue bag teaching a, a group that was a green jobs training group uh, with Sustainable South Bronx, which is another nonprofit that focuses on primarily, obviously, the environment in the the environment in the Bronx, and we're looking at a tree stump that, in this case, had had also had a carbon duran infestation. We're talking about the things to look for for a carbon duran infestation. So, as we work with different groups, we can also we will also modify the curriculum as needed for that group. In this case, since it's Green Jobs trainees we made it a little more detailed and a little more complicated than we typically would for a regular citizen pruner class of just citizens. We also work with uh, a number of youth. These are high school students from our summer intern program that we did in conjunction with Sunnyside Community Center in Queens. And I know that some people may be a little leery about giving high school students uh, pole saws and things like that, but these were this was a group of students that received uh, more or less eight hour a day training four days a week from us, and they also had a lot of supervision from from Trees New York staff who were working with them, and they did a, a really great job. They pruned a, a number of trees in the sunny side near in the sunny side and woodside neighborhoods. And some of them even come back for some of our other programs. This is a, a young lady who had initially been in that program and then came out to come out and do some pruning on an outing with us for what we call our advanced citizen printer program, which is the sort of the next step from the citizen printer program. It's designed to focus in particular on structurally pruning street trees, especially given some of the recent storms and damage we've had here in New York City. So what we're focused on with that is starting the trees with better physical structure for better long-term results and making them more storm damage resistant. This is working with uh, another group of uh, citizen pruners on, a, on another street tree on the same outing. And we actually do this course differently. What we found is that with structural pruning, we've shortened up the classroom portion of the program. So we just have one two-hour classroom session, and then we do a four-hour, a total of four two-hour sessions out in the field with them working on the trees. So it's much more intensive, much more hands-on. And from our experience, 
four two-hour classroom set, four, excuse me, four two-hour field sessions are really what people need to get comfortable um, doing structural pruning on on trees. We we also only open the program to people who have been a citizen pruner for one year or more. So we want to draw people into that program who've at least had some experience out pruning street trees. We so far we've pruned a total of 276 trees for the, the pilot of that program between last fall and this spring. And that includes, uh, unfortunately, a, a big disruption for Hurricane Sandy as well. This is, uh, we've done the program in conjunction with the Parks Department for the pilot. And this is us with the Parks Department who's been working with us very kindly to help with wood disposal which again, because of Asian longhorn beetle restrictions, is a little trickier than just tossing it in the back of a truck and dumping it somewhere. So we've, the normal goal for a, a day is to fill the pickup truck, and we found that depending on exactly the size and what kind of trees we're pruning, we can typically get somewhere between 40, and our record for the last outing was 69 trees in the back of a, the pickup truck, all the brush. And of course, on the, the left there with the little Kirkland label on it and all our pole pruners in it is Trees New York's low emissions vehicle. In addition to pruning as part of the citizen pruner course, we also have outings that are just basic come out and take care of the tree events. These are some of our citizen pruners that we're working with at an event called uh, Mulch Fest where the Parks Department will take people's now no longer wanted Christmas trees, run them through a chipper, and then offer the mulch to anybody who wants to spread it on street trees. So we went out and we did a, a tree bed cultivation and mulching day with our citizen pruners. And then of course we also go out and we do tree, oops, We also do tree care, and now I'm going the wrong way. We also do other tree care and planting events. So we had a, oh, Sarah, is it possible we could go back a couple of slides? Thank you. Thank you. This is a, a day we did of, a, of another tree bed mulching, cultivating, and planting day, and we installed some curb your dog signs as well. And then, as of course, as time goes by, the, the citizen pruner course has to change to match changes in urban forestry practice, changes in parks department policy. So we obviously we work very closely with the parks department to make sure that our course con conforms to their policies and the things that they're doing and are looking for towards the future. Happily, the hose and wire tree guards are now a thing of the past here in the, or rather tree guys are now a thing of the past here in New York City, and instead they've gone over to Arbortai, which is not only much easier to deal with, but substantially reduces the risk of girdling. So this removing hoses and wires used to be a big part of uh, the citizen printer curriculum and what people did, and we just don't need that anymore. And then for all of our citizen printer graduates, we have uh, we have a graduation party once a year in June. So we'll graduate the fall and the spring class at that time. This is a sort of a little after party at the arsenal, which is the Parks Department's headquarters, which is normally where we hold the hold the graduation that moved up to the roof because they have a, a really lovely, as you can see, uh, rooftop garden there. And it's also a nice chance for citizen pruners to get to meet people from other, from other citizen pruner classes because we normally have somewhere between four and six citizen pruner classes in the spring and then again in the fall scattered all over the New York City. So just because people go may live in a particular borough, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll choose that class, they may choose a class in a different row that's more convenient uh, for work with them. And then finally, as part of that, we 
always encourage our graduates to keep in touch with us, to send us tree care problems, tree care questions, photos. We run tree care outings and pruning days for them. And we just try to maintain a, a very good ongoing relationship with our, with our graduates. And everybody who's taken the program seems to really enjoy it. And often now when we're actually out doing that outing session, someone will come by and cheer us on, hey, Citizen Pruners, who was a graduate from a, a past class. And I'd be happy to take any questions anybody has. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sam. That's great. And uh, lovely photos, especially of that uh, looks like afternoon reception on the roof of the arsenal. Everyone, yeah. uh, you are now... Oh, I'm just going to give some instructions for how to ask questions. A lot of people have already got the hang of it, uh, but there's a question and answer tab. Uh, you can just type that in, and we will ask your questions and do the, our best to get through as many as we can um, right now. After our second speaker, Linda from Tree People, will also have a, a time for questions and answers then. So uh, right off the bat, we're just going to um, get started. This is a good one that I wanted to ask you. How do you get volunteers? It looks like you have a really diverse group of uh, participants in the citizen pruner classes. How did you, uh, what, what's your outreach look like? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, our best outreach is pre-existing citizen pruners who are seen, maybe seen in their neighborhood out pruning by their friends and talk about the class to their neighbors or their friends. We also reach out to different community groups, block associations. We've had um, also good results partnering with uh, various local politicians to pass, the, to pass the word out that there are for people who are interested in caring for trees in their neighborhoods. Great. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how much you feel folks are out pruning independently, which, as you said, they can do on their own after they've finished the course, and then uh, how much, you know, people um, uh, sort of want to do it in groups or with or during a, a, a care day organized by Trees New York. Okay. We have a form on our website that our citizen pruners can use to actually log in their pruning or other tree care activities. So we know that they, oh, people do a lot of tree care uh, on their own. I just recently got a, a whole spreadsheet emailed to me from one citizen pruner I work with in a, in a neighborhood in Brooklyn who has pruned probably something on the order of about 100 trees in his, in his neighborhood in the last uh, year or so. And some of them are larger trees, so they're a little more complicated. Um, the, the level of activity sort of varies by individual citizen pruners. I know that there are some people who go out there and, and actively look for trees and prune probably 10 to 30 trees in one day and do that a number of times a year. And I know there are people who are uh, prune relatively few trees, so maybe you know two or three a season. But any advance is better than, than none. And we also always encourage our citizen pruners in case anybody is not either not comfortable pruning or whether because they're intimidated by the idea of cutting branches off in public and someone's going to yell at them or uh, they're just not comfortable with the tools. Any tree care, cultivation, watering, mulching, planting flowers, anything is great. We're thrilled to have them do that. Excellent. Uh, so uh, a question for you that I think a lot of people are probably wondering, how did you, when you were first creating the program, get this approved um, through the city? Was it through the Parks Department or were there other administrative channels that you needed to go through to uh, you know, have them approve this sort of certification to let folks work on New York City trees? Good question. The, the program was, was developed in conjunction with the Parks Department. So it started as when it was recognized that the budget funding just wasn't there and trees were suffering for it. Uh, a, at the time, a group of 
concerned individuals and then they had also reached out to some organizations in the city like botanic gardens that dealt and had an interest in trees went to the parks department and, and said since we know there's this unmet need could we develop a program to to try and fill that gap and the parks de they worked with the, the parks department and they developed a curriculum and and again restrictions on pruning that everybody felt comfortable with and were within the range of what people could do safely great is uh, another question out from the field is there a fee for the classes for citizen printers yes the the course fee for citizen printers well, we actively look for funding to try and reduce that so that whether that be uh, grant funding or in some cases even uh, funding from politicians. Our experience has, has been though that if people have at least a little bit of money in the, in the course, um, they tend to take it uh, more seriously and we tend to get a much better uh, completion and pass rate for the course than if there's truly, if it's truly free to them. Great. And uh, you know, that was one of the questions some folks had, which was how do you get people to stay involved with the course? I think you're right that in many cases having that financial um, investment on their end keeps them going with it and also makes them feel like they're getting a real value out of it. Yeah. Uh, and we work very hard to try and uh, make sure that we always provide that value as part of the course. We provide uh, them the copy of the Citizen Pruner Manual, which is about uh, 100 pages and it's sort of details out all these different aspects of tree care. We provide a lot of other materials and we try to maintain a really good ongoing relationship with, with citizen printers. And here's a question that sort of looks at um, the longer term role of the uh, program as you're getting more and more citizen pruners out there. First question, how many citizen pruners are there in New York now, trained citizen pruners? Uh, well, we, we've trained over 11,000 in the, awesome. over the life of uh, the program, and right now we think we've, or I should say we know that we have good contact information for uh, about 2,500 active citizen pruners. And how do you guys do quality control on the work that they're doing? They, when they go through the course, everything in the course is done with the same instructor. And so part of the, the point of that and a big part of having that four-hour day where they go out in the field is that the instructor can truly see and repeat and go through the material, especially um, the pruning skills with the students. And so that way, if there's anyone that the instructor is uncertain about or has doubts about their ability to, say, make a correct cut at a branch collar, they can either pull that person, they can pull that person aside for... Uh, remedial education. Got it. Uh, we are, just for everyone to know, we've got a lot of questions coming in, which is wonderful. Love that you are all so interested in this program. Uh, we'll get to as many as we can, uh, and, and afterwards we will um, post answers to the questions that we didn't get to. Uh, but one thing that people are asking a lot about is when folks are out there pruning on their own individually, What's the method that you guys recommend for how to remove um, the, the branches that they prune off? I see. Because we're under Asian longhorn beetle quarantine in currently pretty much all except one borough of the city, they have to follow the disposal rules for that. So anything under a half inch in diameter can, cut, can be cut and go into the general garbage. Anything over a half inch in diameter has to be bundled, and then they can call... 311, the New York City general information number, and request a service where the Parks Department will come and pick up the bundles and ship them in accordance with proper Asian longhorn beetle dispo Asian longhorn beetle infested disposal rules. That's not to say that all the trees are infested; they certainly aren't. But everything is treated as if it as if it is for to ensure that we don't spread any more Asian longhorn beetle. Got it. And uh, for the program, you mentioned that you everyone's been taught by the same teacher. Um, is that is that right? Well, no. It, the the students in a particular class will have gotcha. the same instructor all the way through the class, but Perfect. we have different instructors for different locations. And that's one of the questions we have from the web. Do you have uh, volunteer teachers for the program? Is it all staff who teaches it? Um, do you have to pay outside arborists to to instruct the classes? How does that work? 
it's it's primarily staff who teach it at, at this point. We do have um, one of our board members who very kindly teaches uh, some of the courses, and at this point we're looking to bring in a few um, citizen pruner volunteers as teachers, people who, who we've worked with for a long time and uh, who really love trees and, and know their stuff. And we basically have a, a program by which we can we go through for the instructors. We have sort of a, a very detailed written course plan, and an instructor, typically myself, will actually sit in on the first one or two times they go through the class, uh, make sure that they're doing OK in everything from getting through the content to even just presentation skills. Great. Uh, here's an important question. How is liability insurance handled? How is liability insurance handled? Um, Trees New York itself carries general liability insurance. So when citizen pruners are, are pruning with us, with Trees New York, of course, they'd be under our policy. When they're out pruning on their own, there there is no liability insurance. So what, I, what we always tell our students is, when in doubt, don't. Leave it for the Parks Department. But that's the same for any kind of volunteer activity in, in New York City. Nobody in, as, as far as I know and I've been told, the city does not provide uh, liability coverage for volunteers doing anything. Got it. And I think probably our last question for now, a lot of people have been asking about the tools. Do you, the pruners, do, do citizen pruners have their own tools? Do they borrow or rent them from Trees New York? Do they purchase their own tools? Uh, how does that work? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of citizen pruners will purchase their own will purchase their own tools. We supply all the tools that they'll need for the duration of the course. So if they get to the outing and decide that oh, this pruning thing really isn't for me, there's we're trying to minimize the cost for them. Uh, also, uh, typically on the on the field days, like you saw, where we're we'll actually have a day where people can go out and prune. We'll provide tools for anyone who doesn't have their own as well. Other than that, citizen pruners either buy their own or lately I've been working to do uh, group tool buys. So Trees New York will buy, or I should say myself personally will buy, uh, say like 10 or try to buy like 10 or 20 handsaws at a time if I can get an order from that many interested people together to help reduce cost. Got it. Good question. Okay, we're going to hold up there for now because we have a whole new set of very exciting uh, programs and uh, 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 projects that we are going to learn about from the other coast. Out of uh, the Los Angeles area, we have Linda Aramita from the organization Tree People. Linda is a certified arborist and a seasoned tree educator. Since joining Tree People in 1998, Linda has held a number of roles, including volunteer coordinator and nursery manager, before she assumed her current role as forestry education manager and senior arborist. In designing and leading their urban forestry workshops, Linda plays a vital role in training volunteer leaders and citizen arborists to create a sustainable Los Angeles. After earning a bachelor's in crop science from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a concentration in plant protection, Linda moved to Seattle and studied horticulture for two more years. In Seattle, she worked for more than 14 years in the nursery trade as a landscape gardener and designer and doing work for the local AC Trees member organization, Plant Amnesty. In Linda's free time, she loves growing her own food and spending time in nature to cycle, hike, camp, and kayak. And she spends a lot more time uh, planting trees and working with volunteers to take care of those trees. So Linda, please tell us more about Tree People's volunteer training programs. Hi. Um, let's see. I need, here we go. Let me scooch to the beginning here. So, Tree People, uh, we've been around for about 40 years. We are another nonprofit in the world of urban forestry. And we are very concerned about trying to get people connected to nature here in the urban forest in our, our part of the world. And to do that, we do a number of things. We are looking to create a healthy urban forest so that our environment as a whole is healthier. 
And to do that, we one of the things, we do many things, but one of the things we're looking at is to have healthy trees in our urban forest, which we also call a, um, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. Anyway, for our healthy trees, to get healthy trees, we want to have them reach maturity. If we have a bunch of very small, young trees, we're not going to reap all the benefits that trees give us. So to reap those benefits of the trees, um, whether they're newly planted trees or existing trees, we need to care for them in some way. And we're also looking here in Los Angeles to hopefully get to a, a state where we have a, a canopy coverage of about 28%. In some areas of LA, we only have maybe 10% coverage, so we're, we are definitely hurting in some parts of LA. So to get to that point, um, some of the solutions would be, well, obviously, plant more trees and then care for those newly planted trees. But something that we are definitely emphasizing these days is to adopt and care for existing trees, because there are many. So in, in caring for the urban forest, we do a number of things, um, just as uh, Sam was talking about. We do more than just prune, of course. Uh, you know, tree planting, let me just say, tree planting is a very sexy thing. Everybody wants to go out and plant a tree. Uh, and so when we do help communities plant trees, we support them for the next five years with tree care to make sure that those trees get well established. And in doing so, we're watering, we're weeding, we're mulching, we're pruning, we're adjusting stakes, uh, we are observing any problems with uh, pests that might happen, so that in, uh, in that process, the trees will thrive. It, it makes all the difference between trees just struggling Ah, and just surviving as opposed to them thriving. So we have a pretty big volunteer base. We have about 10,000 volunteers that volunteer with us on an annual basis. That's a lot of people. So to manage that large amount of people, we need a certain amount of leaders to be in charge of small groups of volunteers at some of the events. So the first thing we have are what we call volunteer supervisors. They are trained to lead a small group of people at an event um, and those supervisors learn how to plant trees correctly and safely and also to care for them correctly and safely. And they also learn uh, group dynamics, how to lead that group. Another group of uh, leaders that we have is what we call our fruit crew. We have a whole uh, separate program that's our fruit tree program where we purchase fruit trees and may give away about 3,000 um, trees to underserved communities throughout LA. And our fruit crew are people who are uh, trained to go to schools where they have orchards and public orchards where um, people need some help in learning how to prune and care for those fruit trees because as you may know fruit trees need a different type of pruning and also a different care. The last group uh, of our leaders are our um, community tree care teams and they're kind of their own separate unit of people. Uh, they, as a community, will come out to a training and learn how to assess the health of their trees and then uh, I'm sorry, hold on just a second here. It's not clicking in advance enough for me. Oops, sorry. Hold on just a sec. Sorry, had some folks walk in the room here. Um, our community tree care teams, um, they learn how to assess the health of their trees. They come up with a maintenance plan, figure out what needs to happen 
they learn how to get the necessary permits because here in Los Angeles you need a permit to care for street trees, you need permission from the school district to work on school campuses, and for our city parks you also need permission to work on those trees. So they learn how to get that permission or the permits necessary and of course ultimately they then learn how to care for those trees. And then they take that back to their neighborhood, they use the tools to monitor what's going on and then set up events and care for those trees. Now we do have trailers full of tools for these people to borrow. So they just need a trailer hitch or we could use one of our trucks and deliver that whole trailer full of tools for their event. So we do support them in that way. This is uh, the uh, tree care assessment tool that they use. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a uh, column set up with the different things that they're looking for when they're monitoring those trees. They're looking, first of all, to see is there a tree well with a tree in it or not? Um, that would then be something that would clue them into maybe they need to set up a planting for that site. Um, they're looking to see if it's a young or a mature tree. Um, anyway, you can, you can see all the different categories. So there's a, a, a myriad of things that they're looking at. They're checking to see if there's something, there's an issue with that particular aspect of the tree and um, then that will let them know whether they need to organize a larger event or just need to grab one other person from the community to help them maybe adjust a few stakes. And we found that this uh, assessment tool helps them to be very consistent with their tree care. So that's our, our middle area um, of those leaders. Then above that, and you can see that those leaders help to guide and support the larger base of volunteers. And further up on the, the tippy top there of the pyramid, we have our citizen foresters. They are people who go through a training who learn how to organize a planting. All the specifics, how to do the fundraising, or where to find the trees, are there trees available through various grants. We have a number of programs here in Los Angeles or through the state. Uh, they learn, again, what permits are necessary, necessary to plant the trees. And uh, the big aspect, aspect of it is to actually learn how to organize their neighborhood or their community, whatever that may be, a school, um, a neighborhood, a council district, uh, to make that be a community building event. And then on top of that is the Citizen Arborist. That's our newest program. Uh, it is a, a seven-week class, and these folks are trained much more thoroughly than any of the other leaders. They learn tree identification, tree biology, physiology, how to plant the tree correctly, and then, like the citizen forester, how to organize a planting, a street tree planting, a park planting, a school planting. They learn pruning, integrated pest management, and tree care management, basically using that tree care tool to assess the health and then come up with a maintenance plan and organize some tree care events. Whoops, sorry about that. Scooch back here. So at the, the Citizen Arborist trainings, we and, and this is a program I just took over about a week ago. So <laughs> I have taught some of the classes, but I'm uh, new at managing the program in and of itself. Uh, but uh, I have taught, like I said, I have taught some of the, these classes that we do offer. We have other professionals that come in to teach some of the classes, other certified arborists. We have a professor from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, my alma mater, who wrote the book on tree identification for California. He comes down and does the tree identification class, and we do give him a stipend. Um, we do have other professors that come in, somebody who uh, from UCLA who does the pest management or has in the past. Um, other classes are taught by other staff members here at Tree People. 
Um, and it, it varies session to session. We usually offer about, I guess it's at this point, three sessions a year of this training. And we might have 50 people who sign up to attend the training, and it usually dwindles down to about maybe 30 people who go through the training uh, thoroughly through the year. We do ask that they also put in at least a minimum of 20 hours a year of volunteer service uh, acting as a citizen arborist. So a, a citizen arborist is somebody who a citizen forester can call upon to help them with some any, any of these issues. Maybe it's a past problem they're having. Um, citizen arborist is somebody that a tree care team uh, community tree care team can call upon. So they, they are our most educated leaders that we have. The information that we use in training them, um, we use the ANSI A300 tree care standards on pruning, planting and transplanting, integrated pest management. We also look to the ISA, the, Inter uh, the International Society of Arboriculture, using their BMPs on pruning and planting and pest management. There's also a lot of information through the University of California, through the Agricultural and Natural Resources Department. So a lot of the information that we have, books that we uh, suggest as resources come from those sources. And that is basically it. Sorry if you're hearing some outside noise. We, our offices are actually in yurts, which are tents, so uh, we get a lot of outside noise. So I do apologize in advance. Not a problem, Linda. Yurt village is a fun place to be. <laughs> so anyway, I guess um, I will open that up to any questions that folks may have. Fantastic. And again, folks, uh, just as a reminder, you can ask your questions by typing them in uh, through that tab in your panel, and uh, we'll ask them out loud. So I, I have a, a quick question for you sort of right off the bat, which is about the um, sort of different levels of training and different training programs that you have. There are so many, and they're all very important, but have you found that by introducing new ones, um, do you think you've you've lost or diverted attention from some of the others? Does that make sense? Uh, uh, I I do understand. Um, no, we have found that just over the years. Like I, I've been here for 14 years, so I've seen uh, a lot of uh, volunteers and programs evolve over time, and. You know, people's interest changes, and as people get more involved, it's like they need more. They're they're hungry for more information, and uh, may I say, more clout in going out there and uh, doing the work and volunteering that they do. So this gives them another level of uh, importance and also knowledge. Um, we we are really big on training volunteers to be leaders. And, um, you know, some people are only interested in some aspects of being involved in the urban forest, and so we just create, when we see a need, we try to create something that addresses that to keep those people involved and um, have Great. them feel needed, and, and they definitely are needed. And valued. Uh, yes, how, and valued. For that seven-week course, how many hours um, a week? Or how many hours total is the training? So it's a it's a four hour class. Uh, so that's what twenty eight hours. Um, our actually this Saturday is our exam for the the most recent session, and that will probably be two to three hours. This will be my my first time actually giving the exam, so we'll see how long it takes. <laughs> um, and and part of the exam is uh, I do have. Uh, past graduates um, helping me. Part of the class is field experience, so they'll be outside identifying trees and assessing tree health and, and showing us how to make proper pruning cuts, and the other half is um, inside that, uh, that old pen to the paper test. <laughs> Which is a, a really great tool. Um, tell us, how do you, how do you use uh, those assessments when you collect them? Does that all go into a database? 
Um, that that is for them to use. Okay. Um, for for the community tree care teams. Got it. For the, that assessment tool, that's for them to use. That gives them an idea, and they may call me up or somebody up at Tree People to have them look at that. But that's for them to use to figure out. Oh, I've got a lot of work to do. I really need to organize a large event, or I just need one person to help me. Really. Gotcha. Okay. Another question. I mean, again, same question. A lot of people want to know. Um, do you charge for these courses? And uh, alternatively, if you don't, um, how are they funded? Good question. We initially um, wrote a grant, uh, applied for a grant, and that's how we funded the beginning of the Citizen Arborist program, the, the newest program. So that helped pay for some of the texts uh, on tree identification and uh, paid for staff time to put together the program to buy some tools. Um, and now that we have that base, uh, we, we don't charge for the class and we, we, we don't charge for any of the classes that we offer. We try to make things as free as possible so we do a lot of grant writing. Um, we ask donors for it to help fund that and um, I'm not sure now that the grant has been satisfied uh, we may ask people to just purchase that text. But other than that, we would not charge for the class. Got it. Okay. And uh, do you offer the, you know, LA is such a multicultural region. Do you offer your classes and specifically the citizen um, arborists and, and um, other courses in different languages? We do offer uh, many of the other courses in other languages. In fact, um, instead of just, for instance, our citizen forestry program where people learn how to organize a planting, instead of just offering that basic class in, let's say, Spanish, which is probably the other language that's most spoke here in Los Angeles, um, we actually have changed that whole training, um, looking at culturally how that population tends to learn. So it's instead of a a one-day class, it's a, a multi-week class where they meet just a few hours at a time to go over stuff. And often there's there's great food that they bring <laughs> at those classes. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Always um, important. Yeah, so yes, we definitely do. We are working at actually even for our website to make sure that that's uh, uh, in English and in Spanish. So that's that is our big push. Um, Citizen Arborist at this time is not. Um, we have not seen at at this point anyway the need for monolingual speakers. Um, we haven't seen that bubbling to the surface yet. But if if that if it does come to that point, it it'll be a little harder to teach. Um, but we would definitely do it because that that's what we want is to make sure that we include everybody. Um, Great. So that everybody can be a leader. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, what happens when uh, pruners are, are, are working and maybe their uh, pruning trees and residents might sort of disagree on what needs to happen there. Uh, you mean as in like a street tree? Sure. So uh, first off, you need to get a permit from the city of Los Angeles uh, to prune street trees. It's not a hard permit. Um, we, when we do prune, we we prune for the four Ds, which is anything dead, diseased, damaged, or deranged. Uh, deranged would be <laughs> crossing crossing branches, uh, included bark, co-dominant stems, uh, suckers, uh, water sprouts. So those those are the main things that they're looking for. And and just as in New York, they have to be pruning from the ground. They're not allowed to get on a ladder. Uh, they can they're not allowed to make a human pyramid. Sam, I love that. That was so funny. Uh, they need to be on the ground. Both feet on the ground. They can use a pole pruner, but on the ground. Uh, so mostly it's younger trees. They can do some pruning on mature trees. And if there is uh, somebody who has a problem or an issue with somebody pruning a tree, then uh, they will speak with that person and explain what they're doing. 
and you know tell them that they are they are there to make the tree healthy. There we we prune for the health of the tree, whatever that may be, or we're pruning to pr prevent a hazard. So I would doubt somebody would would have any uh, objection to somebody making sure that the tree is healthier and not a hazard. It's another opportunity. For, another opportunity for educating the public about trees. Yeah, right? ex exactly, exactly. So uh, again, another question that that people wanted to know with the New York program: How are most of your um, citizen arborists or, or your participants in these training programs, how are most of them recruited? What's your outreach look like? That's a good question. It's, it's a new program. Uh, this is only the third session that we've taught. So most of that, and we have that large base, right, 10,000 volunteers a year. So uh, the, it's on our website, different ways to be a leader. Um, people are sent, they can sign up to receive uh, a monthly newsletter by email. So we advertise through that. I mean, that's a lot of people right there that that's going out to, 10,000 people. Uh, it's, we do have a, um, a Facebook page and we do tweet. So we do all those social media goodies and that's how we get the word out. Awesome. We're, yeah, we're looking for people who just don't, you know, people who are not attending because they just want to learn more about trees. We're looking for doers. We're looking for leaders. So usually those are people who typically have volunteered with us in the past. That's not a requirement, but that's typically what we see. Great. And I have a final, final question, I think, as we wrap up that I want to pose to both you and to Sam. And it's this, if someone wanted to start a uh, tree pruner program, volunteer tree pruning program in their city, uh, what would be your maybe top two suggestions for that they should know about getting something started? Hmm. I know it's a lot to ask you to boil down in a minute, but uh, real quick off the maybe the top of your head, what are some really important things that people might not be thinking? Insurance, Great. <laughs> which is something that Sam mentioned. Yes, we have volunteer insurance. Um, hmm. There's only two things. Just make sure you're, that what you're teaching is is accurate and is the industry standard. Great. And Sam, can I ask you for your response to that? I would say uh, number one, having a good working relationship with. Uh, whatever your local tree care authority is, or whoever in whoever in the city, the city has responsibility for the trees, we have a great relationship with the parks department, and it's a pleasure to work with. And um, number two is is kind of like before you begin, at least for us in New York City, because we're like super urban and very dense. Uh, there's a lot of logistics questions that you need to sort of think through, lest you find yourself out there doing something that day and you're in a puzzle so it's like you know how do I get rid of wood how do we get this there how do we do that because it's a lot of that little on the ground stuff it's easy to do but it just needs planning ahead of time absolutely that is excellent and I think with that we are going to wrap up today's session there were a lot of questions that we didn't have a chance to get to very important really good questions we can tell people are thinking about how they can do something like this, like these two successful programs in their own city. So uh, we will compile all those questions and I uh, hope that Linda and Sam might be willing to answer some of those for us and we will make those available for everybody so that you can learn what you need to do to make something like this happen near you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this afternoon. The presentations, the, the recorded session and a related resource list will be available in about one week and uh, we at Alliance for Community Trees will email everyone who completes uh, the survey that you will receive uh, a link to. Um, we'll send you all of that information including the recorded session and the resource list. A big thank you to our two presenters today, Sam Bishop from Trees New York and Linda Aramita from Tree People. It was wonderful to hear about your successful programs. For everyone to know, our next webcast session will be the third Thursday of every month, that's April 18th, and it's going to be about effective tree nonprofit 
management and administration. So uh, look for announcements of that and sign up for it. Again, big thanks to our presenters and to all of our participants today. Hope everyone has a great afternoon. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. Thank you, Sarah.